So, so what are we going to I don't know. We're supposed to be doing something to greet for, for Sunday morning, for, for in, in service online. I don't, I don't know. know. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, it's Sunday morning. This is New Beginnings. Welcome to church. This is Donna Joyce. Have a beautiful day. Amen. Welcome New Beginnings friends and family to our online worship. Whether you're joining us live or you're catching this later, we are so thankful that you are with us. We pray that this time be a blessing to you wherever you're watching, that we can come together and celebrate God in this time. Thank you for being here. Good morning. I'm Josie Carino and I'm the liturgist for this morning. Could you please join me for the call to worship? We are marked as, as God's beloved ones. What have we done to deserve God's love? God's love is God's free gift to us, always and forever, even when we are difficult and turn away from God. God's love never vanishes from us. Thanks be to God who is ever faithful to us. Amen.
join me in our opening prayer. Lord of hope and light, in the midst of darkness, you offered light to people who live in fear. Today, that light comes to us as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. Open our hearts this day and remind us that you have marked us as people of hope and light. Prepare us to serve you by serving your world. Amen. Let's take a moment to come before God in prayer. God, we stand before you today recognizing you as our Lord, as our Savior. Lord, you showed us what it meant to be human. You showed us what it meant to live a life of love, and you did so in the life of Jesus. So, Lord, as we remember his baptism, we also remember what it means a gift, Lord, an offering that you will be with us now and forever. Lord, this is a way for you to share your grace, to show us your love. And we remember that in the water. We remember that because your spirit is with us. We remember what it means to be your baptized, your beloved, your creation, Lord. So we ask that during this time, we once again remember Jesus' love for us, your love for us. So that, Lord, we can care for those in need, so that we can share your love with the community. We can share your love with the world. So as we pause, we lift up those that are struggling, those that are sick, those that are grieving those that are out on the streets, those in prison, those that are hungry, those that are poor. For Lord, you are always searching, always longing to bring those people into your kingdom. Help us be a part of that work to shape this world, Lord, a world of love, and bring it into this world, into the community. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 15 to 17 and 21 to 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come 
place and fear the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord This Christmas season, we spent a lot of time talking about John, John the Baptist, as he's known. In our scripture, the one who baptized Jesus, the one who was baptizing lots of folks out in the wilderness. We talked about John. We talked about the, his parents, those that came him before him, with Elizabeth and with Zechariah. We talked about their faith and what it led to. And in Luke, our story today, we have a lot going on. We have a lot happening before where we pick up in our scripture, where John is out in the wilderness, where he starts to call out those that are in power for not taking care of those in need, the poor and the children of Abraham. He talks about the one who's coming, which we know is Jesus, and he names as such. And right after this scripture is right where John well, we are told that John gets put in prison for his work, for what he's doing out in the fields, because Herod isn't happy with what's happening. We also get the ancestry of Jesus, which is named in this chapter as well in Luke. So this is the background. This is what, what Jesus comes from. Jesus comes not only from Mary and Joseph, not only from God, but a legacy in his family. He's named as the cousin of John the Baptist here. And then we're going to see his lineage going back to Adam. All the way back to Adam in this verse, I mean in this chapter of the scripture, we have this lineage that goes all the way back. So what is this all about? What is the meaning of this baptism? Well, many people in the church get baptized. Many in, of you have been baptized. Many people in the United Methodist Church are baptized as infants. In some denominations, they call that a dedication. But we recognize that baptism isn't about us, but it's about God. It's about God claiming us. God's act of mercy coming down to envelop us, surround us. And we recognize that the church plays a huge vital role in this, which is why we have prayers of dedication and prayers of uh, a surrounding where we talk about a covenant with one another, how we're going to take care of the children in our midst, how we're going to take care of those that are baptized, how we're going to honor them, how we're going to raise them to be disciples, to be people of love. This all comes this is a, a good representation of what's happening here with Jesus. You see, when Jesus is baptized by John, his cousin, his older cousin, the one who comes from Elizabeth and Zechariah, who are his older relatives, right? They're older than Mary and Joseph. They're, they're wiser. They're kind of guides. We even get in the few verses that they're in in this book of Luke, that Mary is going to Elizabeth to spend time with her, to learn from her. And Elizabeth is the one who first recognizes who Jesus is and who Mary is. This is kind of like uh, the beginning of a, of a long story, right? Like this is the introduction of who Jesus is. And they include Jesus' baptism here. They include the faith of John, and there's going to be a little, a few other times, one other time really, that John shows up in the book of Luke. But this is pretty much it. This is the majority of what we un, what we know of from John the Baptist in our scriptures. Here, in this one chapter, see, because John is a precursor, is somebody who is preparing the way for the Lord. He's part of the history, the, the background, the legacy. You see, his legacy is Jesus. That's what this is, is talking about here. Not only do we get that as we move into the ancestry of Jesus, right? Where they literally talk about the legacy, about the ancestors and the passing down of faith that 
goes all the way from the beginning. But we see here John the Baptist, who is hugely influential, so big in the minds of the people who would be reading this. He's well known throughout. I mean, even Herod knew of him, would, puts him in prison because of his influence is so great that a king is threatened by his influence. And here, people come to him expecting something from him. In verse 15, as the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he may be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming, and I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. It's powerful words. Now, John is pretty extreme, and he's talking about all of the sins of the people, especially the, those in leadership, when he just a few verses er, earlier calls them a brood of vipers, right? And uh, talks about the wrath that's to come unless you bear fruit. And he names, bear fruit worthy of repentance. So will we recognize in the United Methodist Church that baptism is not just about repentance and it's not about uh, our sins. It's not about those things just being washed away. Because when we do it, when we baptize babies, we, we recognize there's not a whole lot going on in there, right? There's not, it's not like the baby's been sinning all this time. This isn't a cleansing, a, a getting rid of all of our sins necessarily, but it's something before that. You see, because God reaches out to us with love before, before we even sin. Now, in the Methodist Church, we call this prevenient grace. Before, the grace that comes before where God loves us so much, where God surrounds us with God's love. And we recognize that in the water and in the Spirit we, that we pray comes to be a part of our baptisms. We go through the motions. And John Wesley called this a means of grace. A way for God to show us God's love and grace. A way for us to recognize God's love for us. So today, obviously, those that are online with us, we're not able to be together to, to have a bowl of water in front of us, to have it splashing. And today is a day that we would remember our baptism. And that isn't possible if you were baptized as a baby. And we're not talking about the day, but what we are talking about is remember that God had loved us before we could ever love God back. Before we could ever ask for grace. Before we could ever think or imagine what and who God is. God has loved us from the beginning. In our time of baptism, our remembering, the way that we go through these motions help connect us to who God is, a God of grace, of love. You see, God claims us as God's beloved before we ever do anything. God claims you and I. And that's scary to say. It's intimidating to say. God claims us as God's beloved before we are worthy of it, before we could possibly do anything to earn it, before we could even imagine who God is, before we understand who God is. You see, God is the one who claims us first, not only in creation, not only in creation, but also in our daily lives. So today, as we read, as we remember Jesus' baptism, 
the significance of this, of, of those that came before Jesus, of the history that Jesus comes from, of the family that he comes from, of the tradition of faith that he comes from, of the people and the, the, the devout Jews that surrounded him in his Jewish faith. They claim Jesus and they raise him to be a person of love, to be one who follows God. And that is beautiful because that is what the church is all about. How appropriate it is for us to baptize babies, to baptize one another or whenever you were baptized. And if you haven't been baptized, that's okay. God has still claimed us. God has claimed each and every one of us as his beloved. And the the motions, the actions, the ritual of baptism helps remind us that God has reached out and loved us. And then here's the important part of our of our tradition in the Methodist Church. As we go through the liturgy of baptism and speak these words, there's a prayer of covenant from the church, from the people who surround that one, from those who are passing down their faith, their knowledge, their love, who claim to give their gifts, service, witness, presence, prayers, surround those who are coming into the faith, coming in to the church, coming into the community even, with all that we have that we're going to give to one another, that we're going to share all that we have received from God. The beloved community is about this work, about this showing up like Jesus showed up for those in the in his community, those who helped heal, right? That, that Jesus was a part of their life in this powerful way. And that we receive from God first and then we share that with those around us, that we share that in the church, that we share that in the community, that we share that with the whole world. Today in baptism, as we talk about baptism, we remember that first God loved us. First, God claims us. He calls us His own. He shares His love with us. He surrounds us. He gives us grace, which we surely don't deserve. Not something that we could ever earn. But God surrounds us with God's love that is intimate, that is powerful. And then calls us to share that with one another which is what the church is. At its best, at its best, the church is a community of people who are sharing God's love with one another and with the whole world. You see, there's no barriers on that love. It's not like, well, you have to show up to worship on Sunday or, you, or oh, in this case, you have to be online or you have to be in person for this love. Or you have to be here for five years or you have to earn my trust. No, God has given us freely God's love. And it's endless and we're called to share that endless love with everyone. It's not only, it's not like we only have a little of this. We're, we have everything we need. We have an abundance because God has shared God's abundance with us. Of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. The fruit that John was talking about, the fruit of the Spirit, that's what God has shared with us, has given to us, freely as a gift. And then you and I, and us together, all of us together, are called to figure out the best way to share that with those in the world, those in the community, to share that with one another. So as we turn the calendar year, as we head into 2022, as we as the church try to figure out exactly how we are going to share this love, share God's gifts with us, to the world, how we're, the gifts that we have, how are we going to share those? What, what can we share and how can we do this together? 
I want you to think. I want you to pray about what has God given you an abundance of? And how can you share that with other people? How can you share that with those that you know? And how can you share that with those that you don't already know, but will get to know in this coming year? You see, there's not supposed to be barriers or boundaries in the church. The walls of the church are great for keeping us warm or keeping us cool in the summertime. But they've also done another thing in the church's history, and that's keep people out. There's been practices and cultures and even people claiming theology that has allowed certain people to receive this love, certain people to be loved by us. And everyone else we can ignore or we can move away from or we can just decide that we're not going to serve them. We're not going to love them. We're not going to show up in those spaces. This is what John had such a difficult time with. The leaders that came, they had love for certain people and certain people who followed certain rules in the community but there were lots that were missing out on this love, and they're the ones who need it the most. The least, the lost, the broken. As Jesus reminds us, He doesn't stay with the 99 sheep. They're all together, they're all safe, they're where they're supposed to be, but Jesus goes and finds the one that is lost, and then invites them back. You could say surrounds God with God's love. So today, as we remember the time that God claimed us as His own, as we remember the time that God surrounds us with God's love, long before we could ever deserve it, long before we knew what it meant, long before we understood Jesus or the Trinity or any of this, but remember that God has claimed us and loved us That God is creation, that we are beloved just because we are. Not because we've earned it. Not because we deserve it. But first, we remember God's love is for you and for me, even as broken people. Even as sinners. And as we receive that love... Lord, I ask that you give us the strength to share this. Lord, with one new person this year. With one new person this year. Help us share this love in deep and intimate ways. For your love, Lord, is endless. Thank you. We praise you in the name of Jesus, in the likeness of Jesus. Help us to be like Jesus. Amen. It is now time to present our tithes and offerings before God. Your offerings to New Beginnings can be given through chat or our website, nbie.org, and through texting. Look around us today at this gathering. We are a community of people who want to follow Jesus. We share so much with these early Christians who struggled in the work of the gospel, but also find joy in the Lord, joy in the life they shared together. No matter what we are carrying this morning or what we face, we are not alone. At this moment in our worship, we're invited to share what we have so that others will also find the same welcome and the same joy that we have known. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. May we give generously to the kingdom. Let us pray. 
in celebration and thankfulness for all we have received from you, O God. We now share our offerings. May they be used to continue your work in our community and beyond, and wherever they are needed. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a few next steps for ministry that we'd love to invite you to. And the first is that today at 2 p.m., we're going to do this online. Uh, we were hoping to get together in person and have some conversations. But due to the spike in COVID, we're going to hold those conversations that are so important. And we're going to postpone that part of our day. Uh, but this today at 2, we're still going to gather on Zoom. And we're going to talk about the ways that we're going to move forward together and learn one another and learn what our gifts are as a church. We're going to make a plan for ministry. We're going to make a plan for new beginnings. And this is the very first introduction to the conversation. We're going to have many of these throughout the years. We're hoping to do surveys and inventories to invite people to share their gifts, to figure out what our gifts are as a church, to figure out what our plan is, how we are going to share this love that we have received with the community that surrounds our churches. We're gonna figure out what it means to be a multi-site church. We have a lot to figure out, and we're hoping that you can join us at two just to start the beginning of this conversation. We would love to have you. If you want to find us, you can find us at nbie.org. Right on our homepage, we will have a link to our Zoom at 2 p.m. That is today, Sunday, uh, January 16th. We also have a lot of other things going on. We encourage you to sign up for our e-blast uh, through the email. If you're not receiving that, that gives up-to-date information every single week on what's going on. We have a food distribution that is happening at our downtown campus on the third Wednesday. We could really use your help as we package and prepare meals and boxes of food to give to those in need. Um, that is the third Wednesday. And that is if uh, at 9 a.m. if you can show up. Uh, contact Joyce Leifer for more information. And if you uh, need any help with that, you can actually call our church office at 909-515-5770. We also have a clothes closet and food distribution at our North Campus. And that is happening on our second and fourth Sundays of each month. Uh, that's another great opportunity to serve the community to help um, there's ways that you can be enriched. You can join one of our Bible studies or hymn studies. On Tuesday night is a hymn study led by Don Leifer. On Friday evenings, we have a Bible study led by Neil Platon. We also have ways for us to be in community, small groups where we invite people to share what is going on in their life, to, to gather around one another, to pray together. Uh, and we call those community groups, ways for us to be in community and to share God's love. And those are happening on Sunday after church. They're happening online. They're happening in many different spaces and places. And we'd love for you to join one of those. If you have any questions, please let us know. There's so much else going on in our church. And there's too much to say in one announcement. But please check out our e-blast, our website. Um, and you can also sign up for a phone message in case uh, that's a better way to reach you. Every Thursday, we also have a phone message that goes out. We're so excited to be with you, to move forward in ministry, to share God's love with this world. Thank you for being a part of New Beginnings.
Would you receive this blessing as we go from this place? Know that God loves us. That God has done everything to show us God's love that surrounds us and gives us all that we need to go and love this world as God has loved us. Go now to love and serve one another. Amen.